This is Valley News Live at 10. We have breaking news tonight. Good evening. I'm Justin Betty and I'm Stacy Van Dyke. We just learned new details on what we now know was a deadly crash in Ottertail County this evening. It happened near the intersection of Highway 1 and Highway 83 near Battle Lake. The Ottertail County Sheriff's Office now confirms 35 year old Joseph Bernstetter of Fergus Falls was killed when the car he was driving crossed the center line and hit another vehicle head on. Two people in the other vehicle, 65 year old Mitchell David and 63 year old Violet Davis of Fergus Falls were taken to the hospital with serious injuries. Law enforcement is still investigating, but right now they say alcohol does not appear to have been a factor. And I just think, what if he would have got me in his truck? What was he going to do with me? Where was he going to take me? That is from our exclusive interview with Jackie Halverson, who says she was held at gunpoint by a man at the Hillsboro subway on Sunday. But today we learn the man accused of the attempted abduction is not in custody. 62 year old Mark Wybie of Hillsboro was charged with three felonies, including attempted kidnapping, illegal restraint and menacing. This happened in broad daylight Sunday morning at the subway in Hillsboro. Halverson says Webby grabbed her and started to drag her toward his vehicle, pointing a gun at her head, but she fought him off, ran to a nearby gas station and found help. Uh, Wybie was taken to a Fargo hospital for mental health evaluations, but then released. A warrant is now out for his arrest. You can find this exclusive story and much more using your VNL News app. Download and use it for free. Just search VNL News in your app store. All right, switch gears and take a look outside at the weather tonight, where uh, it's now the time of year where it is dark at a little after 10 o'clock, but we're gearing up for a hot week ahead. First Alert Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson joins us now with details. Hutch. Well, I'm, I'm going to concur with that. It is getting dark. And as we look at our uh, Luther Family Ford view, there isn't much in the way of cloud cover. As we head into the 10 o'clock hour, most of our showers have diminished. Now you can see just a couple of uh, green blips working their way through places like Polk County, particularly the western stretches, and still see some distant clouds from Fargo. But by and large, things are very quiet. Check this out. Nationally speaking, we have some changes taking place. This is going to impact us. There there's something called the jet stream. It's that river of air way up there, 30,000 feet, and it is way up to the north. Now, this is the weather wiggle in the jet stream we've been dealing with for the last several days. It's starting to shift off to the east. This huge area here, that's a big old dome of heat, and it's heading our way. So we're going to expect warmer conditions, but for tonight, shh. Nice and quiet. Temperatures comfortable, 50s and low 60s. We're on our way to upper 40s and low 50s for the morning. And tomorrow will be the best of the next seven days after that. Saturday and Sunday, the heat is on. Storm chances return. We'll have hour by hour details, but right now I want to highlight Sunday. That'll be our best chance of showers and storms. We'll have hour by hour details here in just a few moments. Good. Thanks, Hutch. Abortion continues to be a hotbed of discussion in the country, and another chapter was added yesterday after a North Dakota district judge temporarily blocked the state's abortion ban. So what happens now? Well, local attorneys say, of course, there could be more lawsuits. There could be more orders in the future. But as Tyler Murrow of Murrow Law in Grand Forks puts it, the state statutes are really pretty black and white. I think as to this specific issue regarding when the ban can take effect, it's not very convoluted at all. This is very simple. The statute simply says in black and white 30, day, 30 days from certification that a judgment was issued. Issued their final judgment this week based off Attorney General Drew Wrigley's recertification last night. The ban could now go into effect August 27th. At this point, determining health care options can feel like a puzzle for women in North Dakota, but places like the Grand Forks Women's Pregnancy Center urge women to remember, regardless of what comes next, there are options. Ultrasounds are just one of many free services provided there, along with information on parenting, adoption, and abortion. They also have a new option, which they say can reverse the effects of the first abortion pill. However, nurse manager Betsy Horkin says the biggest thing that she's seen change since the row reversal is the conversation. People coming out of the woodwork just talking about their abortion experience and wanting help from it, and that's something that we can do here too. The Grand Forks Women's Pregnancy Center also offers group parenting classes and referrals to the Perry Center in Fargo to provide stable housing to women and help them get back on their feet.
We've told you this about a number of active shooter or emergency response training sessions being held at local schools and government buildings over the last couple of weeks. And in Minnesota, there are a number of people across the state working right now to keep students safe during the school year. Aaron Hassan Zada found out how Minnesota is preparing for a worst case scenario. All kinds of training, weather hazard or uh, chemical spills, bus crashes, any of these types of things we assist schools. Randy Johnson, director of the Minnesota School Safety Center, has been to every corner of the state helping schools keep kids safe. We ask the schools, what are the things that keep you awake at night? And in each county, there's someone like Doug Berglund working on solutions. So you're the person at the helm if that worst case scenario happens. At the helm, behind the scenes, yeah. He works with all the county school districts to refine and beef up plans for a worst case scenario. In Stillwater schools, for instance, they've added secured entrances and built out anti-bullying programs, as well as plans to reunite parents and students if there's an incident. The approach has changed and we train, uh, we train a lot, and we work collaboratively. And he says law enforcement goes in sooner, a concern top of mind as video showed law enforcement in Uvalde retreating and waiting an hour and 14 minutes to intervene. If we understand it to be an active threat, that we will intervene. Are we ready to handle it? better. I think a lot of parents want to know that. Yeah, I am, I am very confident um, that, that, that we will. I think in general, Minnesota is very well positioned and prepared for responding to that type of an incident and event. Aside from training, Berglund says FEMA grants fund equipment and protection they need to go in. It is a space where technology is evolving and yes. that, that can be helpful to you. Yes. But Randy Johnson will remind you. You cannot buy your way to safety. Technologies are not going to be the easy button. It's relationship building. And that's something people can do to protect their students, talk to them, listen, and share the important stuff. That's Aaron Hassan Zeta reporting. Now, as for the latest police school training in our area, Grand Forks Police announced they're holding training at Schrader Middle School tomorrow morning from 10 until about noon. A 23-year-old Fargo man is facing a number of charges tonight involving the sexual assault of a 15-year-old girl. 23-year-old Michael Alleth is facing those charges. Court documents say a gas station clerk contacted police after a teen girl wrote, help me, on a piece of paper while buying some items. Court documents say the girl went into a car with six other men where she was sexually assaulted by Aleth. Bail has now been set for $100,000. There's also currently another case with similar charges against Aleth open in Cass County Court. He has pleaded not guilty. Meanwhile, a teen has been charged with DUI after police say they were speeding through a Fargo neighborhood early this morning before rolling their vehicle. Police responded to the 1700 block of 35th Avenue South where the driver also hit an electrical box and a tree. The driver and passenger, both under 18, have non-life-threatening injuries. The driver was referred to juvenile court for several other charges as well. Retired Clay County Sheriff Bill Burquist has been suffering from Alzheimer's and now he's been placed on hospice care at Sanford. His family is asking that you keep Bill and his family in your thoughts and prayers in the coming days. Burquist retired in 2019 after more than 40 years in law enforcement. Some big ideas were discussed at today's Fargo mayoral budget meeting. The Fargo Dome may be getting an expansion and the city plans to beef up one of the performing arts centers in town. The mayor also announced some new anti-flooding infrastructure that will be installed at diversions all around the city. The groundbreaking for those is next week. The federal government is pledging over $400 million in grants and loans to expand the reach and the improvement of high-speed internet in rural areas. 11 states, including North Dakota, will be receiving this new new technology. The statement comes as part of a $65 billion administration plan to expand affordable high-speed internet to all communities across the country. The U.S. economy, however, shrank for the second straight quarter, according to new numbers from the Bureau of Economic Analysis, showing the gross domestic product fell by 0.9 percent, just under 1 percent. Now, that is one of the traditional markers of a recession, two straight quarters of decline. 
though the nation's unemployment rate right now, 3.6%, way off from the almost 10% it was through much of 2009, the Great Recession, close to 15% in April 2020 uh, when COVID really hit. However, inflation is at a 40